Broken Flowers is a tough quest for me to analyze. In all of my previous playthroughs, I felt it got way more hate than it deserved. I never had a problem with it, the writing felt pretty good. However, now examining it with a critical eye, all of its flaws are way harder to ignore for me, and I might have to conclude that Broken Flowers is structurally broken. And to find out why, let's do a quest analysis on it. In Broken Flowers, Geralt sets off to find Dandelion after having a vision indicating that Ciri was with the Bard some time ago. Geralt heads to the Rosemary in Time where he meets up with old friend Zoltan Chive and they scour the city and its surrounding areas for Dandelion, talking to various people, the most prominent of which is Priscilla. Priscilla points the pair towards Horson Jr. and Siggy Reuven, two of Novigrad's crime lords, as potential avenues to investigate Dandelion's disappearance, which is how Broken Flowers comes to an end. So fun fact, this is actually my second attempt at doing this video. The first one I failed miserably at because I found going through the footage for Broken Flowers to be exhausting because of how repetitive it was, and that was causing the video to come off way more negative than I wanted it to. It didn't feel objective. So I took a few days break, I released a rankings video, and I came back to Broken Flowers, and I'm glad I took that little break because I feel like I can see some of the positives a little bit better now. Positives like Dandelion's characterization and how his personality brings out this softer side of Geralt that is always fun to witness. <sighs> Nose is too small. Aye, <laughs> and the sword's too big. Uh, by the by, is that how it's done? Killing a wyvern. <laughs> Technique's not quite right, but you gotta admit he's doing it with gusto. And while Geralt may be more annoyed than amused by how his reputation is skewed by associating with Dandelion, these moments are a good comical reprieve from the darkness of the main story. What are you? Oh, I know you. You're that witcher took Dandelion out whoring. Geralt, right? Call me Geralt. Geralt? That Geralt? The one Dandelion's rescued time and time again? The reason this works is because of how much of a contrast Dandelion is to Geralt. Geralt is mopey, grim, grumpy. Dandelion is flowery and pompous and all over the place. They're like the last couple that you would ever expect to be besties, and yet here we are, and Geralt's low-key reaction saw the pomp and flamboyance of Dandelion is priceless. He lusts after every other woman he meets. How can I explain? Who does Dandelion love most? Himself. Unfortunately, there are a few things that make this not work quite as well as Broken Flowers intended. First off is that Dandelion isn't present for a single line of dialogue here. Everything about him is conveyed through other characters, whether that be Geralt, Zoltan, or one of the various women slash men that Geralt confronts. And Dandelion writing his meeting ledger and poetic verses might be worth a chuckle when we're five minutes into the quest. Though well she knows the touch of silk and lace, she shuns not straw when gripped in lust's embrace. But when we're over an hour into the quest, and this is like the 73rd mention of Dandelion's promiscuous personality without any plot progression, it's just exhausting. And the thing is, you can construct an effective story around a missing character, but it's gotta be narratively efficient. But Broken Flower stumbles because it feels like we spend an hour just listening to inane gossip. Claims she was his niece from Covir. Ha! <laughs> Horvir, more likely. You do realize Dandelion doesn't have a sister? Sure he does. Saw him himself. Funny, she don't look like him at all. Blonde, for starters. Maybe they've different fathers. Mm-hmm. Different mothers, too. Yeah, so too much gossip, plus all this focus on a missing character, this is a bit rough. But what makes it worse is, I'm not a fan of Dandelion in the games. I do like him in the books because he gives us a different perspective on Geralt, but the games are from Geralt's perspective with some small exceptions, which is why Dandelion feels superfluous here. And the final problem with this setup is something I touched on already. There's just too much here! Geralt starts off heading to the Rosemary in Time where he meets Zoltan, and they talk all about Dandelion's quirks. Then it's off to question five of Dandelion's girlfriends who are spread out across the urban sprawl that is Novigrad, including one that takes you well outside of the city to the Vagelbud residence, and it's more dialogue about Dandelion's quirks. Then when all of that is done, it's back to Zoltan for more of the same. And then Zoltan directs you to the Kingfisher to meet Priscilla, and after her admittedly beautiful song, it's more about Dandelion's quirks. The number of different objectives here is comparable or probably even less than some of the best quests like Family Matters, but there you're doing a variety of things. In Broken Flowers, you are talking, 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 talking. 
and I love the talking in The Witcher 3, but it's too much. Like, each individual bout of talking has personality and humorous character beats in this quest. Came to ask about your rhetoric tutor, Dandelion. Rhetoric tutor? Good one. But you had some sort of relationship. If you call him chasing after me a relationship. Again, funny, but have you noticed how freaking similar the different conversations are with each of Dandelion's amorous hopefuls? It's like that office meme everyone uses for stuff like this. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Wait, I don't want to come off too harsh, but it's like they're bashing my head in with Dandelion's characterization. And I want to just reach out and be like, hey, CDPR, guys, th I've had enough. And I know you don't have to have every one of these conversations. You can skip some of them. But it's just so much repetition. It's almost infectious. It's like that one scene from the hit show, The Office. Corporate needs you to find the... It's happening to me too! Broken flowers would work so much better if they just trimmed some of the fat. Like, why have five different contexts that you have to go to who then make you go back to Zoltan and only then do you go to Priscilla? Why not just have two contacts who point you directly to Priscilla and you can go talk to her? I mean, the second conversation with Zoltan is so pointless. Like, you go to him and he tells you this. Corporate needs you to find the... Ah, that's not right. Let me find the right clip. Uh, that makes it clear as crystal. It's Priscilla. Aye. Must be her. Who's this Priscilla? A trover, it's like you said. Quite popular of late. Makes up Dandelion with a pair of tits. You've got the general idea. Interesting image. So how Dandelion handled meeting his female double? I think he fell in love. Wow. Zoltan inexplicably not mentioning the woman whom he thinks Dandelion has fallen in love with earlier is an egregious example of the poor pacing of this quest. This is so messy, and there's no reason for this other than I think CDPR wanted this quest to be a tour of different sections of Novigrad, so they wanted you to go to all these different places. That's why the locations you go to largely don't overlap with the locations from the first two main quests in Novigrad. But my issue is that none of these different areas really tells you anything about the world. Eliel lives in the non-human outskirts of the city, and I would have loved to learn more about what it's like to reside there. But the only reason I know that non-humans are around is because Eliel himself is an elf, and you see some dwarves or gnomes walking around. Instead of examining the workings of Novigrad, the quest focuses on the fact that Eliel is a crossdresser. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate what they do here with Eliel offering up a very insightful and touching point of view for why he does what he does. Why do I dress up? As a child, I dreamt of becoming a Doppler when I grew up. I became a tailor instead. Discovered clothing. Costumes can express all the complexities of one's personality. I'm a Redanian Countess one day, a Dockside Thug the next. That is true freedom. But as well written as this philosophy is, Elihal also feels like a character who's only defined by this one attribute, which makes me uncomfortable because I can't tell if the game is making fun of him or empathizing with him. That's a major reason I wish the quest focused more on Novigrad as a city than on these shallow characters. Like, rather than make Maribel obsessed with horses, I would have much rather have learned more about the school she's running in the poor section of Novigrad. Give me world building over shallow characterizations any day. So the quest is a ton of repetition, and that repetitive nature is not used to help the player get to know the world in any sort of meaningful way. Hopefully the gameplay is at least varied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's not. I mean, Broken Flowers tries. I mean, it, it strains really hard to make it seem like Geralt is doing a variety of things. When he goes to talk to Vespula, she is being harassed by some of Horson Jr.'s henchmen. You don't pay! Help! What you hollering for, stupid wench? What are you hoping for? A knight in shining armor? Close enough. Geralt then has a choice on how to handle these goons, which could obviously lead to a fight. But this doesn't feel unique, because we get a variation of this choice dozens of times throughout the game. Then you've got Elihal and Marabella, whom are just exchanges of dialogue. There's no gameplay whatsoever. Well, actually, Marabella is teaching a class and asks Geralt to wait, so the player has to control Geralt to walk outside and wait for like 15 seconds, and then go talk to her. Riveting. Admittedly, it's more interesting if Geralt chooses not to wait as Marabella allows the kids to ask Geralt questions, at which point the kids ask about the notorious sex drive of witchers. It means that due to our mutations, we have an overdeveloped libido. Libido? When a girl likes a witcher, the witcher says, what'll you give me for killing a monster? And she says, anything you want. 
So the witcher says, Heh heh heh, then you'll give me something you weren't expecting at all. And that's where little witches come from. So this is funny, but it is lacking gameplay wise. Though, should I actually complain? Because when Geralt has to talk to Molly, he has to go all the way to the Vagobud residence outside of Novigrad, and once there, he gets to partake in the art of horse racing, which is a trash gameplay mechanic. Come on, Witcher! Let's see what you're made of! It does feel like CDPR realized this was all clumsy and dull, hence why you can skip the travel time by riding there with La Valette and General Voorhees, last seen in Imperial Audience. But these sequences feel awkward too, because it seems like you might get some fun lore if you ride with Voorhees, but instead it's dead silence. But I don't know if I should complain, because I notoriously suck every time I have to small talk with coworkers when we drive somewhere for work. Yo, yo man, it is so cold, man. Well, how about this weather? I, it's crazy, I, man, I, right? I, right? I don't... Yeah? I, I don't know. Oh, we're, we're really getting along. This is a lot of fun. After we're done with this eight-hour drive, we should go straight to a bar, not even to the hotel, man. Let's hang out. So probably a good decision by CDPR to not bog us down with dialogue during this trip, but that doesn't make up for this pointless excursion out of town. Even talking to Voorhees out there, you'd hope for some lore about Nilfgaard and the importance of Novigrad to their plans, but instead we get horse lore. The best gameplay can be found when going to talk to Rosa Varatra. She's a Nilfgaardian princess or lordess or something important, and the guards won't let Geralt meet with her. So he either has to smooth talk his way in, or he has to sneak around and find a different way into the residence. And Geralt's method of sneaking in is more along the lines of sliding in. But just like the encounter with Horson Jr.'s lackeys when Geralt went to talk to Vespula, this choice about how to get into this residence is a gameplay trope that The Witcher 3 goes for repeatedly. I can't count how many times Geralt has to choose between sneaking into a location or paying someone off or bribing his way in or whatever, so this also doesn't help Broken Flowers stand out. Once inside, they try to make it stand out by having Geralt go through a sparring session with Rosa and by having Rosa have a twin sister. And a separate side quest with Rosa gets unlocked here, which that's unique. But the sparring is just bog standard non-lethal combat, so it's not memorable. And the twin situation, like everything else in Broken Flowers, it's amusing in a vacuum. Edna sent Dandelion some love letters. She signed my name. I felt you needed help taking the first step. You blushed every time he sang a ballad. He'll next sing at your funeral if you don't stop it right now. Quiet. Ooh, now that's a mentor. Strong and decisive. Perhaps it's time I took up swordplay. Remember, this quest has just been dragging on and the laughs are feeling more and more forced, so I just, I'm just wanting it to end. Thank God it's over at this point. No, it's not over because you have to go back to the Rosemary in time and talk to Zoltan and then Zoltan's like, hey, yeah, I knew about Priscilla all along, but I just didn't want to tell you for some reason. Stupid Zoltan! Okay, maybe that was harsh, but that kind of lands on a little issue I have with him, and that is I'm just not that interested in Zoltan. I mean, he's fine in the books. I mean, I just got to the part in Baptism and Fire, Baptism of Fire, where uh, he's introduced, but he doesn't do anything for me here. CDPR is brilliant at building new characters and they are mostly good at developing characters from the books, but Dandelion and Zoltan constantly feel shoehorned in these games. I might be forgetting if they did something vital in the prior two, but they don't impact the plot of The Witcher 3 in a meaningful way. That's part of why I found making this video more of a slog than the other videos I made. It just doesn't feel like it matters. Like, if Geralt had just found Priscilla right away in Broken Flowers, nothing would be lost. Sure, some minor story beats would have to be dropped, like the fact that Vespula may be a T-1000 who foreshadows future events in Dijkstra's bathhouse. It was the last straw. All those questions about the washerwomen at the bathhouse, then this. I beat him black and blue and threw him out on his ear. All that talk about a bathhouse, it's because Dandelion's planning on breaking into Dijkstra's vault beneath his bathhouse. And similarly, this conversation with Ellie Hall mentions Kalkstein. That's because Dandelion was talking to Kalkstein about how to break into that vault. But this isn't apparent unless it's a replay of the game. Like, you don't notice it on your first playthrough because it doesn't mean anything. And that means the pacing is still off. This quest would have been so much better without all the fluff. Fluff like having the innkeeper from White Orchard randomly be at the Kingfisher while Priscilla is singing. 
I really don't know what her purpose is here, because she starts ranting about Geralt being a murderer, but neither Geralt nor the player have to do anything, because the rest of the crowd basically just tells her to shut up. So it feels like a completely arbitrary anecdote at the tail end of a long, meandering quest. I'd much rather have actually met Kalkstein, a character from the first game, rather than just have the anticlimax of Ellie Hall describe his death at the hands of the witch hunters. Though his description is pretty great because of Kalkstein's glorious final moments. But as he perished, ooh, the goings on, impressive. Fiery beasts circled his pyre, then rose into the sky and exploded to form letters. Really? What did they spell? Radovid sucks flaccid cock. And that brings me to Priscilla, and no, it doesn't have anything to do with you say this, the, the status of the genitalia that she engages with. No, this is about Priscilla's song, because this is a beautiful scene. You flee my dream come the morning Your scent berries tart, lilac sweet To dream of raven locks and Twisted stormy of violet eyes glistening as you weep. I love this song. I could listen to it on repeat all day. And just to be clear, this is about Geralt and Yennefer and their relationship. It's extremely moving and captures their relationship perfectly. But why is it here? It just doesn't flow with the rest of the quest. While it's a better fit than the random ass innkeeper, it still feels disconnected with the pacing of the quest. I'm all for having these huge emotional moments, but after an hour and a half of running around with very little in the ways of emotional peaks or valleys and broken flowers, it kind of feels unbalanced to suddenly have this massive mountain of emotion. I mean, even the King of Beggars does a double take here. And why is he here? This is so random. This just feels like padding, even if there's a purpose to it. Like, I can see that this is more dandelion character development. There's a good reason I don't pour my heart out to bards. They always babble. And I think CDPR also realized that Novograd portion of the game is Triss heavy, and before you make the decision to romance her, which is coming up soon, they wanted to remind players about Yennefer's importance in Geralt's life. But come on, man, read the room, CDPR. This quest was already too long. This song would have hit so much harder at almost any other point in the game. It's like Broken Flowers can't figure out its priorities. You might notice I barely had anything about Priscilla's character because other than the song, she gets no development despite being the most important character you meet here. Granted, you learn more about her in later quests and she does provide story exposition. When last I saw Dandelion, he told me he was planning a heist. Siggy Reuven's vault? I learned only that he raised a ruckus at Horson Jr.'s lair. Then Horson's men chased him all over town. But Priscilla not being developed at all at the expense of forcing us to get to know five minor characters whom you immediately forget is kind of representative of Broken Flower's broken structure. So thanks for watching and listening to me rant about how repetitive Broken Flowers is. I just don't like when things just keep happening over and over and over. Um, on a different note though, this is my 31st Witcher 3 quest analysis. I'm sure you're all double taking just like my friend the King of Beggars over here, but uh, if you uh, like me being a complete hypocrite, please like and subscribe.